Section 101 Lomasa said armed with the vajra then and supported by celestials endued with great might Indra then approached Vritra who was then occupying the entire earth and the heaven and he was guarded on all sides by huge body the Karakeyas with upraised weapons resembling gigantic mountains with towering peaks and the encounter that took place between the gods and the Dhanavas lasted for a short while and was so chief of the Bharatas terrific in the extreme appalling as it did the three worlds and loud was the clash of the swords and scimitars surprised and warded off by heroic hands in course of those fierce encounters and heads severed from trunks began to roll from the firmament to the hearth like fruits of pamira palm falling upon the ground loosened from their stalks and the karakeya sound with iron mounted blood jumps and cast him golden mail ran against the gods like moving mountains on conflagration and the gods unable to stand the shock of that impetuous and proudly advancing host broke and fled from fear prandara of a thousand heights beholding the gods flying in fear and ritra growing in old boldness became deeply dejected and the foremost of gods prandara himself agitated with the fear of the kala chaos without losing a moment sought the exalted narayana's refuge and the eternal vishnu beholding indra so depressed and hunted his might by imparting on to him a portion of his own energy and when the celestials beheld that sakra was thus protected by vishnu each of them imparted on to him his own energy and the spotlight bhamarishis also imparted their energies on to the chief of the celestials and favored thus by vishnu and all the gods and by the high blessed rishis also sakra became mightier than before and when ritra learned that the chief of the celestials had been filled with the might of others he sent forth some terrific roars and that these roars of his the earth the directions the firmament heaven and the mountains all began to tremble and the chief of the celestials deeply agitated on hearing that fears and loud roar was filled with fear and desiring to slay the asura soon her looking the mighty vajra and stuck with indra's vajra the great asura decked in gold and garlands fell headlong like the great mountain mandara hurled of yore from vishnu's hands and although the prince of daityas was slain its sakra in panic ran from the field desiring to take shelter in a lake thinking that the vajra itself had not been hurled from his hands and regarding that vritra himself was still alive the celestials however and the great rishis became filled with joy and all of them began to cheerfully chant the praise of indra and mustering together the celestials began to slay the dhanavas who were dejected at the death of their leader and stuck with panic at sight of the assembled celestial host the afflicted dhanavas fled to the depths of the sea and having entered the fathomless deep teeming with fishes and crocodiles the dhanavas assembled together and began to proudly conspire for the destruction of the three worlds and some amongst them that were wise in inferences suggested courses of action each during his judgment in course of time however the dreadful resolution arrived at those conspiring sons of diti was that they should first of all compass the destruction of all persons possessed of knowledge and ascetic virtue the worlds are all supported by ascetism therefore they should lose no time for the destruction of ascetism compass he without delay the destruction of those on earth that are possessed of ascetic virtues that are conversant with the duties and the ways of morality and that have a knowledge of brahma for when these are destroyed the universe itself will be destroyed 
and all the dhanavas having arrived at this resolution for the destruction of the universe became highly glad and thence forth they made the hoshin that abode half aruna with billows high as hills their fort from which to make their sallies thus handed to the 101st section in the tirtha yatra parva after one parva